Um, thanks very much to the two speakers before. It's always a bit of a risk going third because they might have done half of your presentation. Um, Krista, uh, thankfully I haven't done most of yours, but hopefully by the end of mine you'll see there are quite a few things coming out of CSR with the partners that we have that can then go into your systems. Um, unfortunately, you have done half of my presentation. <laughs> um, but that is not necessarily not by design. Um, CPI is one of the models that CSR looked at when we were looking at developing the BIDC. So we've gone down much the same route as you have. Um, you guys started, I think, in, I think it was 2002, with around three people. We started about four years ago with, what, four people, I think. So we had a head start, something like that. Um, and, and there's actually another parallel. Uh, your, your facility there in, in the XICI um, research and development facility, Back in Mofontaine, we were actually in the ACI facility, one of their facilities. ACI was a subsidiary of ICI. So, very similar process that we've gone through. Um, but I really want to speak about the South African context today and, and what it is that we need to put in place to start growing our biomanufacturing sector. So, I do want to introduce a little bit more about biomanufacturing, which luckily neither of you did perfectly, so that was great. Um, and look at what is the problem within South Africa, and it's exactly the same thing. Um, that's what Chris was talking about. Um, I'll then go a little bit into the BIDC um, and what we put in place to stimulate the biomanufacturing sector in South Africa. Um, go through a couple of case studies, as Raj has said, uh, and, and then just end off with some of the offerings that we have for industry. So this thing called biomanufacturing or industrial biotechnology, um, it's a really broad area. Um, basically, it's the use of bio-based manufacturing processes in industry. Um, but it covers so many different areas. So you have, where's this thing? So you have agri, I love it when it does that. So you have agri biotechnology, which covers natural products, new agro processing methods, um, natural medicines. You've got healthcare biotechnology, um, looking at new medicines, new ways of producing medicines, biopharmaceuticals, new diagnostics. Um, you have industrial biotechnology. Um, which is really the underpinning processes, things like fermentation, biocatalysis, green chemistry, um, all of these things that are used to produce a wide variety of products. So you've got anything from commodity to speciality chemicals, biopolymers, various materials, down to bioenergy, ethanol, biodiesel. Um, so it, it covers a very broad range of sectors. So to call this a sector in itself is a bit difficult. Um, as Christo mentioned, this is really an enabling technology across a range of sectors. Um, but why are we moving to biomanufacturing? Um, we, we know we have a finite amount of resources. Uh, we're a growing population across the world. We're using resources all the time. Um, and really, we do have to find a better way to sustain ourselves. Um, and biomanufacturing is that greener, sustainable technology that's been implemented now, and it is the, the technology of the future. And that's why there is so much interest in this space. Um, biotechnology, the processes themselves, have a much lower carbon footprint. Um, they conserve our fossil resources. A lot of the time, they are more specific um, than your chemical processes. Uh, and they also require fewer steps. So it makes them um, pretty economically competitive. Um, as Chris mentioned, the hassle that we have at the moment is converting to what we have done in the past to new technologies and getting past that installed infrastructure. Um, Biotechnologies also have the ability to create a number of products that are not possible um, by traditional synthesis. So things like biopolymers, biopharmaceuticals, enzymes that we use in our everyday life and things like our detergents. Um, those kind of things are not really possible, um, or not at least economically, um, by traditional synthesis. Not a new technology, been around for centuries. Beer brewing is a biotechnology. Um, I know a lot of us partake in this particular biotechnology argument. <laughs> Um, so that's been around for ages, and it is considered a red biotechnology. And, and there are a lot of instances of more higher tech red biotechnology, um, production of commodity chemicals, speciality chemicals, things like that. Green biotech is taking off, particularly with the, the whole biofuel revolution. There are a lot of instances of uh, first generation and second generation biofuels, particularly in the US and Europe. Um, and then white biotechnology, health biotechnology is really starting to to get going now, um, but it shows a lot of promise going forward. Uh, I think it's three of the top ten drugs in the world at the moment are produced by biochemical means. Um, but we really are still, 
although we said this in the 90s, we are still at the beginning of this trend. This is going to be a massive trend going forward. South Africa does have a biomanufacturing sector, albeit very, very small. Um, so I've just got a few examples up there. We do have the large commodity type biomanufacturing, things like Senman, SA Bioproducts. We've got examples in animal health, production of vaccines like OBP, Delta Immune, um, flavors and fragrances. I've got Purus up there, Tubus as well. We've got some niche biotech companies, Kappa, JBS. We've got agricultural type biotech companies like Galtech. Um, and there are a lot of other members in the audience that are from different companies. I've just listed a few of them. Um, but it is still a small sector. And the point of today's discussion is how do we get that sector bigger? How do we grow that sector? And this is exactly the same picture that Chris put up, talking to the innovation chasm. Um, in South Africa, we have really great <coughs> university science councils. We've got technology de development in industries themselves. Um, there's no shortage of really good ideas. But the problem is getting it across to products and services. Um, and it's that same innovation gap, that same TRL, TRL line, just represented in a different way. Um, getting products from your test tube or your flask to something that is really in the market, that is tangible, that is being sold, is the hassle that we have at the moment. Christo spoke, spoke a little bit about this little here. Yeah. This space over here, where we require a lot of funding, um, it's a bigger space than is actually represented there. Um, but what the BIDC has looked to do um, is fulfill this space. Um, the kind of capability and the infrastructure that is required in the middle there, as Chris was talking to, is very different to what you'll find in a typical academic situation. Um, and indeed, in a lot of industries. Uh, he mentions big players like BASF, they can do it. Most industries cannot develop and maintain this kind of a capability just for themselves. So the BRDC has started to develop this, much along the same lines as, um, as CPR. So we started um, just over four years ago with support from the DST and the Jobs Fund. Um, we started putting together the BRDC with the express interest of growing the biotechnology sector in South Africa. Um, we put together a number of specialist service, specialist skills um, and the associated infrastructure that goes with that skills, with those skills at demonstration and pilot scale. Um, the biggest thing is putting the models together that makes it accessible to universities and to industry alike. And I'll go through a couple of those models in a bit. We also recognize that if we do start growing this sector, there are a number of new skills um, that are required. And there was a talk earlier this morning around that. Um, so we've also put a number of programs together to look at skills development and developing a new workforce for this new industry. So we've come quite a long way in a fairly short time. Um, we've managed to develop some significant infrastructure um, and a lot of skilled personnel that are ready to help industry. Um, there is a tour, hmm, I don't know if I want to say this. <laughs> there is a tour tomorrow, um, 12.40, I believe it is quite full, but we do encourage you if you have not registered so far to come and see the facility, please go up to the registration desk after this talk um, and see if there is still space. We'd love to see everybody down there. Um, so, yeah, we've developed the facility, we've brought in the skills, and in a relatively short time, we've had a, a, a decent track record. We've supported just over 20 enterprises. Um, we've put 20, sorry, 20, 75 new bio-based products onto the market created just over 180 jobs, permanent jobs, over 200 temporary jobs. Um, we've importantly trained just over 70 interns, so it's 20, 25 a year. Um, and a lot of those interns are being absorbed by either the industry we're supporting or the industries that we're creating through the SMEs that we support. So it's been a good run so far, but it really has just been, as we started off with it, it's, it's the catalyst for what we want to do in the future. Just as an indication, um, as I mentioned, industrial biotech is fairly broad-based and we have to think of it in a South African context. So it's not just typical biotech companies. We have supported some of those and I have an example just now. We've also supported a lot in the natural product sector. So we've put out a lot of um, cos new cosmetics with natural ingredients. Um, we've supported SMMEs in animal nutrition, in human nutrition, um, speciality chemicals um, and even new agro-processing technologies. So it's, it's been all the way across the board and it's been great fun both building the uh, infrastructure, the capabilities and the skills to cover all of those areas. 
Um, just uh, uh, in terms of where we represent it across South Africa, we're mostly supporting SMEs in Gauteng, um, but we do distribute across um, most of the country. Um, and in terms of our own diversity across South Africa, the majority of the SMEs that we've supported are black owned SMEs. Before I go into the case studies, I do want to talk a little bit about the models. Um, we, we have implemented what is an open innovation type model, and we do see ourselves as fairly pivotal, pivotal uh, in, in a bigger innovation system. Uh, what is critical in, in initiating uh, a market like this, it's really starting up a new market, a new sector. You require really strong governmental support um, to, to initially drive uh, the development of the sector until that sector is strong enough that it can start investing in research. Um, so we partner heavily with government departments, primarily we partner with the Department of Science, um, but also with trade and industry, with environmental affairs, with agriculture, all of those industries that, that span across the sectors that we have. And then through a number of programs we look to support um, in this first phase, it's been particularly small and medium enterprises, um, but increasingly we're looking at supporting um, universities, uh, and established in industries. We recognize though that we can't just support the industries themselves and we can't just give technical support. So we do look at offering a number of other services that are necessary to build industries and make them sustainable in themselves. So through this we, we, we have focused as a technical center predominantly on the product and process development, on contract manufacture and on training and skills development. On the product and process side, we employ an agile manufacturing approach, so we look to get a minimum viable product out to market as quickly as possible, and then we refine based on market feedback. From a skills point of view, um, we're not an academic training center. We have a lot of people that come in and do masters and PhDs with us, but the focus of the BRDC is really on experiential training, hands-on training, getting your hands dirty. Now, yes, you didn't actually get hands dirty in the fermentation. Okay. Don't follow my lead on that. Um, but, but really getting in there and learning how to do these things properly. Um, but to have a sustainable entity when it leaves us, we need to be able to provide so much more. So with our partners or directly, um, we create access to further funding for implementation, um, partners like the RDC. Um, we, where we can, we provide business support internally or otherwise we, we partner with uh, incubators to provide business support. Um, and through the variety of partners that we've built, we provide access to markets for a lot of the entities that come to us. So let's just look at a couple of examples. Um, I would love to tell the stories of all the enterprises we've supported. They're all fantastic. Um, they each have their own nuances and the fun that we've had with them. But in the interest of time, I've just selected three. So we'll start with somebody in the audience sitting next to me. Um, so with Alvima. Um, Alvima came to us um, with a good product, a good idea to do a, a, a fortified product using Moringa. Um, and they had a small process, associated small market. What we did for them is we, we created a standardized production process, a standardized formulation, um, a number of, of different products. Uh, and, and having this product diversity allowed them to enter a lot of new markets. And that resulted in increased volumes, so we put them in contact with a contract manufacturer. <clears throat> um, that, uh, we transferred the technology to the contract manufacturer that obviously then moved into bigger volumes. Um, it's now getting a little bit of a runaway actually, almost, um, where the market is now extending across Southern Africa um, and the volumes are getting really significant. Um, Monkey Kelly will probably tell us a bit later that she's gone on to do her own manufacturing facility now. Um, so, really great success story. Um, in no small part, uh, I think due to the drive of the business owner, um, but one of the points I want to make here um, is it would not have been possible without developing that initial public-private partnership. In this case, the private partner is obviously Alvima. Um, the initial public entity is BIDC, but that really extends to the government support that made BIDC possible. Without having that entire chain, the support would just not be there within this country and we wouldn't have a story like this. Um, the next one is Optimus Bio. Optimus Bio is a spin-up company from the CSR. They provide a range of uh, green cleaning and cleaning products, uh, both for, for household and industrial use. Um, over the last three years, we've developed and transferred 21 new products to Optimus Bio. 
Um, they are currently renting space on the CSR campus and they're back integrating their process. Um, so Optimspire is doing really well. The point with this one is that sometimes CSR sees a gap in a market um, and we actively encourage the development of enterprises to fill that gap as far as possible. The other point I want to make on this one, which doesn't really come through here completely, is, is the importance of addressing entire value chains. So you'll get limited impact if you just get a good enterprise out there into the market. But if you understand that market's value chain, uh, their supply chains, their distribution partners, you can make a much greater impact. Um, so in this case, one of the real stimuli for developing Optimus Bio was a number of industries were coming to CSR and saying, we want cleaner replacements for our cleaning products, greener replacements. Um, and so we started looking into that, and, and through developing those solutions, we realized it would be a better idea to develop a spin-out company with those solutions. So we did manage to get the products to those initial companies. But through the development, we then saw that a lot of the ingredients and products were applicable to other industries. So Optimus Bio now supplies ingredients and all products into other companies. So that's allowed a number of other companies downstream of, of Optimus Bio to diversify their portfolios and increase the market. So from us just looking at one particular company, we've now addressed a value chain, we've created economic value, we've created jobs across that value chain. So it's important to understand the entire sector that you're working with when you work with a single enterprise. The final example I want is, is one of our examples where we're looking at technology that is not just locally competitive. So JVS Biotech, a small company, um, they got the license to produce IGF. Uh, not going into technical details today. IGF is a, a high value component of media that's used in the production of uh, pharmaceuticals. Um, so they got the license, they came to us, we did um, validate the production processes and we're currently manufacturing for JVS under contract. The important part here is that the samples that we have produced have been independently validated to be better than the gold standard. That gold standard, by the way, is produced by a large multinational in Europe. Um, so what we're doing here on the southern end of Africa is not only competitive, uh, or not only the same, but is competitive with international markets. So as a country, we must not think that we have to develop technologies that are just locally relevant or regionally relevant, we can develop processes, technologies, products that are internationally relevant. Um, and we must not limit ourselves to that. Um, their water volumes, volumes are increasing. When I say the volumes are increasing, I think it's going from one litre to two litre, but that's in the order of millions of, of dollars difference. Um, so it's really, really going well at the moment and, and another one of our success stories. So just in terms of summary, um, we cover a a fairly broad range of, of sectors through the enabling technology of, of industrial biotechnology. Um, through around about two decades of experience, it's almost three decades of experience now, um, in biotechnology and through the support of the Jobs Fund, we've managed to create a facility that really can assist a wide variety of, of industries. So we've developed the skills, we've developed the infrastructure, not quite enough yet, sorry, we've only got 10 to the 6, not 10 to the 7 yet. We're getting there, okay, yeah, we're, still, we're still babies. Um, but um, we've developed that infrastructure, the capabilities, we use our, our own bespoke technologies as well as our experience in the field to assist the industries with the products that they need. Um, and then we also offer a number of other things, as I said, either by ourselves or through our partners. Things like regulatory support, engineering <coughs> support, uh, market access, linkages. There are a lot of things that we offer to, to the industries and the SMEs that come through our doors. Last thing I want to say is that I think it would be remiss of me not to uh, acknowledge the support of DST and the Jobs Fund initially um, and CSR in getting this thing going, uh, and particularly the team that I think has toiled for the last four years to get this thing right. Thank you to all of you. Um, and that's my story. Thank you.